Hey everybody, Pastor Brian here. I just wanted to start off today's session with a quick note to let you all know that once we finish the book of Psalms, uh, we'll be taking a hiatus as I go through a period of transition. Uh, as much as I would love to continue these onward uh, without an interruption, uh, there's just so much uh, that I have to do for this period of transition in my life. And so we'll be taking a hiatus, uh, undisclosed amount of time until uh, I am settled and feel comfortable bringing these daily Bible studies back. Thanks for your understanding, and I hope you enjoy these last couple psalms. Good morning, Pastor Brian here. Thank you so much for joining me today as we read a psalm a day. Today we're up to Psalm 149, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible as I always do. And I invite you to follow along or just give uh, today's reading a listen. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing God's praise. In the assembly of the faithful, let Israel celebrate its maker. Let Zion's children rejoice in their king. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise with the drum and lyre. Because the Lord is pleased with his people. God will beautify the poor with saving help. Let the faithful celebrate with glory. Let them shout for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to get revenge against the nations and punishment on the peoples, binding their rulers in chains and their officials in iron shackles, achieving the justice written against them. That will be an honor for all God's faithful people. Praise the Lord. Well, that's the end of Psalm 149. You know, and the thing that really stuck out to me today was kind of this juxtaposition that is happening between the just incredible praise that is described here in God's faithful people with the, the instruments and with, with dancing and just thanking God for for God's saving help. And that's juxtaposed against this this praise is also oriented toward how God will execute judgment against the other nations, the nations that don't believe in God. And so it's just kind of an interesting psalm that that talks so profoundly about the way in which we should joyfully praise God and then how that is also associated with with God's judgment of other nations because they don't believe in God. And I think that that's just something that we have to, to wrestle with and to think about that, that this is how the people of Israel uh, kind of viewed the world and viewed uh, their relationship to God was that God blessed them and that God created that nation for them and that they were to defend it because it was the promised land. And I think the thing that we need to defend the most today is our faith and sharing that faith. Because that's what Christ asks us to do, is to, Matthew 28, is to go therefore into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching everything that he has commanded to us. And so I think we just have a different way of understanding what it is that God has, has promised us and that what we should do with that promise. That we should defend, but in a very different way. Defend by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So what did you hear? What did you like? What didn't you like? Maybe it was that, that kind of uh, national language that was being used against other nations. But anyway, write them down, get them out, share them, and as always, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and God bless.